I will now take a few minutes to share our thoughts on how OS query can be extended to protect the entire attack surface of an enterprise. Hello, my name is Umar Reddy. I'm the VP of Engineering and co-founder at Optics. Uh, when we talk about an enterprise's attack surface, let's see what, what this actually constitutes of. Um, we typically think of an attack surface uh, as hosts, virtual machines, laptops, and uh, and container environments like Docker and other runtime container environments. To this, you also add in modern modern uh, enterprises, you have Kubernetes, and you have uh, orchestrators, Kubernetes, OpenShift, uh, to monitor or manage your container environment. And then you have cloud providers on which you host your uh, infrastructure. So these two are also a part of the attack surface. Now to this, uh, most enterprises now use applications, SaaS applications like G Suite, Dropbox, GitHub, uh, and also they use identity providers like Okta, Ping, uh, Auth0. All of these to extend your attack surface and any misconfiguration in any of these surfaces is going to be trouble uh, and it would be an opening for an attacker. To protect an enterprise, we have to observe what's happening in all of the attack surfaces. We have to detect malicious activity and behavior, and we have to proactively calculate the security posture. Let's see how OS query can help. Uh, as we saw from the different attack surfaces, you can collect telemetry, and OS query can help you collect this telemetry in a very normalized uh, form. And then this telemetry can then be fed to your analytics engine, which can then derive insights uh, into, uh, into your environment. Like you could take this data uh, and write rules which will enable you to detect uh, MITRE attacks, uh, tactics, MITRE attack tactics. Or you could uh, proactively run a CIS compliance check or a SOC2 check, PCI or FedRAM. In addition, you could also run vulnerability checks uh, on the data streaming through. So how OS query helps you here is it takes uh, all of the telemetry, puts it out in a very standard relational database format, and then feeds it to your analytics engine from which you derive insights. Now you may ask, why, why do we use OS? Why do we have to use OS query for this purpose? OS query was built for uh, operating systems. So yes, OS query was built for exposing an operating system as a relational database. And it hid all the complexity of the operating system. So you did not have to know that a process on Windows, uh, how do I get access to details of a process on Windows versus Mac versus Linux? It normalizes all of that. And you just have a table called processes. Right? So that, that was the primary purpose of OS query. And now, and OS query is built in such a way that it has a core component and it has plugins. Uh, the core component provides a database cache. It runs a schedule of queries. It runs real-time queries. And it provides a SQL syntax access to all of the telemetry which it's collecting. Uh, and then it allows you to deliver this data to a variety of destinations like a file, a socket, Kinesis, or Kafka. And these uh, are constantly being extended and being added onto. So now we can leverage this robust core and build plugins for other sources of telemetry, like from SaaS applications or from cloud providers. And once you do this, you automatically get all the benefits of your data being present in a relational database. So as we say here, uh, that the insights you never thought were possible are really just a join away. Literally a SQL join away, you can get, an ins you can get insights which you would, were otherwise not able to do earlier. Now let me take you through a little bit more detail on what I mean by the core and the plugins. Now, on the left here, you see the, the different uh, sources of telemetry, cloud providers, uh, orchestrators, and identity providers. Uh, so you build plugins, you develop plugins to interact with all the APIs provided by these uh, services. Uh, these plugins take the data and, and put it in a structured format into OS Query. OS Query Core now takes over and provides the capability to temporarily store the data in RocksDB in case you lose connectivity to the collector, for example, that the data will still stay in the endpoint and keep collecting. And when the, the collector is back up, the data gets pushed out. So 
two of the popular ways in which you can get data out of OS query is by, by, by using the file system approach where you write the results to a file and then you export that file out to an Elk stack or Splunk or any other custom uh, software you built. Uh, and then you apply your analytics on top of the data to get insights into alerts, compliance, and dashboards. Similarly, you could send the data off uh, in a streaming fashion to a TLS server. And the TLS server can do the, exactly the same thing and uh, provide you insights into what's happening on your infrastructure. Uh, now I'll take you through a couple of use cases of how data from OS Query and data from products like Cloud Query and Cube Query. Cloud Query is the product which uh, collects data from uh, cloud providers and uh, and feeds it into OS Query. Uh, so in this example, an IAM user uh, logs into AWS, creates a EC2 instance, and that EC2 instance has connectivity to an S3 bucket. Uh, and then um, when the virtual machine is launched, the AMI which was used to launch the virtual machine has OS Query baked in. So as the virtual machine comes up, OS Query launches and starts collecting data. So now let's say the user pulls down something from S3, pulls down a data file, and then exports it out using curl. Now, how do you detect all this activity? If these two were separate sources of data uh, and in completely different format, it would be a lot more challenging. But in our case, the cloud query data arrives at OS, uh, in the format in the form of these tables here. I'll give you an example here. We get IAM information, EC2 information, S3 information, and cloud trail information. Uh, and then on the endpoint, we are collecting process events, DNS lookup events, and socket events. So when the user tries to call the file out, a DNS lookup is done. We know if the DNS is going to a malicious website. Right? So we can detect that. And then the process events capture the curl command and all its command line options. So now you can see that uh, it becomes really easy to track the flow of a bad actor all the way from the cloud uh, to inside the, the virtual machine. Uh, so this is made feasible by using a product like Cloud Query in conjunction with OS Query. Now it's time to show you a demo of uh, Cloud Query and Cube Query. Uh, so th these are two products which uh, Optix has come up with, and these two products will be open source next week. But uh, let me take you right now through a demo of uh, both of these products. Now I'll show you a demo of uh, the Cloud Query product. Uh, what we have done uh, is created uh, a container which has uh, the Cloud Query extension to OS Query and the open source OS Query all packaged in. So to make a quick demo, uh, I will show you how to launch this uh, container and then run queries uh, inside the container. Uh, what you would see is the first thing you have to do is configure your credentials to access these different clouds because that's uh, without uh, those credentials, uh, you know, nothing would work. So uh, uh, the details of how you configure credentials will be provided in the readme file in our open source repo. But for now, I'll run this command to launch the container. The container here has two mount points. This is the mount point for configurations, and this is where uh, the OS query results are going to go on your laptop. So when I run this, so when I run this, the container is uh, starting up. So now we have the container running. And now we would go in. Uh, let's uh, log in to the to the container and to ps minus ef, and you will see that uh, you have OS Query running and you have the extension uh, uh, running. So now let's uh, uh, now let's take a look at uh, let's launch OS Query I here. And you see OS Query I. Look, let's look at the tables we have provided for each of these cloud providers. Like if you look at the AWS tables, you will see we have a handful of tables in AWS for images, instances, subnets, VPCs, and uh, buckets. Similarly, for GCP, uh, we have a few tables. The same thing for Azure. 
We saw the tables which uh, we could uh, query from the different cloud providers. Now let's run a simple query. The query here uh, lists out all of the AWS EC2 instances. So when I run this query, it takes a few seconds because we're making the API call. This is like a real-time query going up to AWS and coming back with uh, with all of the AWS EC2 instances configured. And meanwhile, I will also so you see that there are four EC2 instances configured, and here are the details. And we just run one, one other query um, here, which is uh, on the GCP. So here's a query of the GCP compute instances. So now you see here that there are five GCP compute instances. So I guess you get the idea. So there are several tables we provide, and then there is you use SQL to get access to all of the data. The schema of the data can be seen right here. You have the list of tables, uh, and we will be open sourcing this next week. Uh, now I'll show you a demo of our, the Cube Query product. Cube Query is used to query Kubernetes clusters. And uh, we have launched a test Kubernetes cluster, uh, the details of which are here when I run my kube control command. I see that I have a pod uh, called kube query. Now let's try to get into that pod, into the kube query pod, uh, and uh, and investigate further. Right. So once you're on the kube query, now if I do a PS, I will see that you have OS query running and you have kube query running as an extension. Now I am able to now run OS query I here inside this container, uh, along with the extension for kube query. And now I'm at OS query I prompt. Here I can look at all the tables, uh, Kubernetes tables we have uh, implemented. So you see here that there are several Kubernetes tables already implemented. There's Kubernetes info, Kubernetes pods, Kubernetes nodes, jobs, and, and several. You get the idea. So almost all of the tables to retrieve the metadata and information from Kubernetes is here. Now, now let's try to query a couple of these tables to show uh, you know, how useful the data is. Here I'm selecting um, a privileged containers. I'm asking a query to show me all of the privileged containers in my deployment. What I'm seeing here is there are four privileged containers running in my Kubernetes cluster. That's a very simple SQL query. Now, let me run a query to show all of the Kubernetes pods we have. Uh, and now you see the Kubernetes pods displayed from the Kubernetes pods table. So, so in this way, you all the complexity of learning APIs or how does it interact with GCP and all of that is completely uh, you know, isolated into the plugin and the OS query just works like how it works on operating system. Now I'm able to join this table with another table from a different source and be able to derive insights which were uh, uh, not possible earlier. We at Uptix have been working for a while on cloud query and kube query as we see a lot of demand from our customers to kind of protect uh, the additional uh, uh, you know, uh, pieces of their infrastructure. So we, we, are, we have a cloud query product and a kube query product, which both of which we will be releasing to open source next week. And that's what I had just uh, given you a demo of. And in the near future, uh, we will be building uh, SAS query and identity query. So as I had explained earlier, uh, these, four, these four different kinds of products along with OS query will cover the entire attack surface of our enterprise. Please follow us on Twitter or LinkedIn uh, for the news on when extensions will be available uh, or will be open sourced. Thank you.